Hello friends, Opera SM back with another video. I had so much fun playing the Kaya Popper variant of this, uh, I'm calling it uh, Death Touch Brigade. I decided I was going to do a powered version of the deck. Uh, so as mentioned, kind of burning off of what uh, Giannis had done, um, I'm going to include High Alert in this deck. Uh, it's fantastic uh, enchantment support for 15. Uh, when it's on the board, creatures you control gain Vigilance and First Strike. And then whenever a creature you control attacks, it gets plus X plus O till end of turn, where X is its toughness. Uh, it can also have some activated gems to enable any disabled creatures you might control. Uh, this is fantastic. So this by itself is going to allow our creatures to... Um, all of our creatures to get first strike, which is wonderful. Um, and also pump up their power a little bit, as if you saw the last video, you saw it just took a little while to win, so this will help increase our clock by quite a bit, I think. Uh, it is an enchantment, so Idyllic Tutor is a great way to find it and get it half charged with mana. Uh, the only other uh, variant that I made on the deck is I'm including Graveblade Marauder. It is a 4-7 Death Touch Berserker for 14. Uh, Wintermore Commander is another variant you can use if you have one of these or the other. I chose the Graveborn Marauder even though it cost a little bit more mana. That 7 toughness synergizes so well with uh, High Alert to uh, give it a huge power buff. Um, also, it's a abil triggered ability when it deals combat damage to a Planeswalker. Your opponent takes 5 damage will also help increase the clock. So I'm trying this, but again, um, a Wintermore Commander has some cool... Uh, interactions as well. Uh, the biggest thing I noticed, which is kind of fun, is Falmire Knight. It would technically make Falmire Knight. Um, would make Falmire Knight um, be a uh, uh, prevent damage. So, uh, yeah, uh, other cards in the deck. Again, uh, Discovery and Notion Rain to find our combo pieces. Also, since we are playing... Uh, the Kaya Planeswalker, it will synergize with the ultimate ability by uh, self-milling us a little bit uh, to give uh, more damage that would be dealt to our opponents. Uh, Consecrate in there just as a great uh, non-targeted removal spell. It can also exile stuff from our opponent's graveyard if we need it. Some life gain and then Crush Contraband is just a great uh, support destruction as well. So let's go ahead and give this powered variant of this deck a try. So let's see, we're going to do the same thing, the Rising Tensions node that we were on. I'm just going to continue doing that. Uh, looks like we're playing against a, a Garuk 2 deck. So yeah, again, thank you very much, Giannis, for uh, posting uh, your idea. This is a lot of fun to play around with, and if you're just using... High Alert, since it gives creatures First Strike and Vigilance, two of the three abilities we need for this combo, you could technically run this with just some other creatures with Death Touch. So that opens up a green, even some blue variants, because there's a decent number of blue-black uh, creatures. I think a lot of them have flying as well. So all right, let's see what we can do. Great High Alert is one of the best things that we can have, so we're going to start charging that, and then hopefully draw into some Death Touch creatures here. Uh, let's see. Our first match, we can get a white match, which is great. We can get a red into a white match. That's even better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think that's our best option here. All right. Great. So we've got a white match that we can grab here. And we're going to cast Discovery to look for uh, some of our creatures to start getting some damage on the board. Oh, yeah, I don't see anything better than this white match for now, so we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, we got all three of our creatures. This is like best possible scenario. This is great. So we don't need Idyllic Tutor anymore since we have our other options. So now we're going to get our guys down on the board and start beating face. All right. I'm trying to think of if I want to get a uh, Thalmire Knight down just to start dealing a little more damage right now. I just want to get the Grave Blade Marauder down first to start um, just applying a ton of damage. But let's look at our match situation first. Let's see, we can get blue match, it looks like. Um, we can get a blue into a green. That might be good. And then we have two, two chances to maybe hit a black match on the top. So I think that's where we're going to go. Um, yeah, let's actually just get the Grave 
Blade Marauder down first. It's a uh, it's gonna apply so much damage, so much pressure. We're just going to go ahead and activate the first ability as well, just to get that on the board. Let's see, we can get some blue matches here. Um, there's a chance we could even get a black match on top if we match the right blues as opposed to the left blues. Just checking if there's anything else we could do that might be any better. Don't really see anything right now, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, our opponent left us black, so I like that. All right. I'm going to get rid of the idyllic tutor so we don't necessarily need that and let's see so we can do black match into some loyalty that seems pretty good seeing if there's a reason to try to want to do anything else I don't think so so we'll just do that for expediency's sake I should have probably thought it's about leaving black for the opponent because uh, he does get a lot of mana off of black so that's something I maybe should have thought about Oh, maybe this guy took our idea. <laughs> no, that's fun. It's cool to see someone else playing this card. This was in my popper version of the deck, and I didn't realize it when playing my popper version, but this is also great for the Kaya's ultimate because it dumps more cards into the graveyard uh, when you activate her ultimate to deal more damage to your opponent. So let's see. Um, so Falmire Knight and Orochin Assassin is great. Actually, what I should do to get a little value, eh, whatever, we're not going to get too value, too value crazed. I was going to say I could activate this ability first to draw a card and gain a life, but I'd rather, I think, actually just get pressure on the board. We're at no lack of cards um, in hand for worry about not having stuff to do. So let's see. Uh, I don't think there's anything I can do with these greens, so I'm just going to go ahead and match some blacks. But watch this. This is what's going to be great and a big reason why I wanted um, this card is it gets plus 7 plus 0 from the, uh, from the uh, high alert. So that is just wonderful. Um, so let's see. All right. I'm going to get creatures out. I'm going to go ahead and hold this Falmire Knight. Actually, what I'm going to do is cast the value side of it to draw a card first. And then I'm actually probably going to hold on the Commanding's Presence as well because he has the second ability queued up on Garok. So if he kills one of my creatures, I don't want to have that one buffed at the moment. So let's see. We can get a match five here, which is wonderful, into some red matches. Great. And we're just going to take this black match away from our opponent and then have... Um, I was going to say Falminer Knight charge it up, but what I'm actually going to do is start charging up this other Graveblade Marauders because I have a feeling the opponent's going to use their ultimate to kill ours because it's a pretty big threat, and it tends to, not exactly sure how it's programmed, but it tends to, uh, and you just saw as well that it also, in addition to the 11 damage, drained, uh, made our opponent lose 5 life, which is great. Um, so this is a great, great clock. Okay, he didn't activate his second ability. I still think I'm going to be a little conservative and just go ahead and uh, hold the uh, Grave Blade Marauder uh, in hand uh, for when he eventually decides that it would be a good strategic advantage for him to play something to kill my guy. But yeah, dealing 11 plus 5, 16 damage a turn for that one is great. So and then again, once he activates that ability, I will probably play the uh, the aura that's in my hand, but just waiting right now in case he's going to kill something of mine. Oh great, he just used the first ability. Well that's great, we don't care that his stuff has Berserker too much, so now we can kind of go off to the races here. Let's see how close. Well no, he's he's got mana up for the ability again, so we will... We'll hold it a little bit, I think. Um, let's see, Falmire Knights. This is the one we want to charge up. So we'll go ahead and charge that one up first, and then if we have enough mana, we can uh, draw a card on this one in a little bit. 
Actually, what we'll do is go ahead and charge up the commanding presence if we need it. So let's see. Uh, greens aren't great for us. Blues are okay. Um, and whatever. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. That actually was not good because it gave him a black lined up, but that's okay. Playing fast and loose. But this deck is fun. I just like this. This is such a cool idea. So, um, and it's just fun to see. This, I think, is one of the best decks to highlight something like um, High Alert. I mean, that card is just so good. Uh, it can make you win much, much faster uh, than you could in some other variants sometimes. But, um, but yeah, oh no, our opponent has a board full of big, scary creatures. What do we do? Well, we smash our guys in there, and they don't stand a chance. This is just fun. This is just a heck of a lot of fun. All right, um, so again, I think I'm just going to hold my creatures back a little bit, um, so in case they do have a board wipe or something, because we're in a commanding presence, so no sense in over committing uh, at this point, so. All right kind of split up the damage on some of these things so uh, that way if they do kill stuff um, which I'm assuming is, would be our Grave Blade Marauder uh, we would still um, have some other pretty big pressured creatures on the board and also the uh, we could start getting tokens on the board um, if uh, he killed our second backup copy that we have. But yeah, look at that. It was great. We just, with our first strike death touching, we just took out his whole team. So that's pretty cool. All right, yeah, you keep, you keep making your tokens. I don't like abusing wolves, but um, we're gonna take you out, wolves. All right. Uh, let's see. So we have variants on these guys again. I might just cast one because um, we still have a backup one in hand. I don't think he has any supports on the board, which are huge, so we're not too worried about charging up that other thing, but why not? Let's just go ahead and do that. Actually, I shouldn't have done that. I just killed my own support. Dummy Bryce. All right. We don't want to make human tokens because we like what else we have on the board. So yeah, this is kind of the deck firing on all cylinders, which is pretty cool. And yeah, this uh, haven't used uh, Graveblade Marauders a bunch. I used to use it uh, towards the beginning of the game, but it's a pretty cool card. And I think this is a great, great deck to uh, showcase it uh, combined with this high alert. All right, let's see. So we can get uh, black matches here, which is probably what we're going to do, making sure that there's nothing better. Don't think so, and we just want to get this game ended pretty quickly, so um, we'll keep a high alert backup in hand, too. We just have backup upon backup here, which is great, so even if our opponent casts something like a Great Aurora, like our opponent did multiple times that last game, uh, we should be in great, great shape here. All right, um, not too worried about removal options at this point, so we're just going to grab some more creatures here. No humans, and no humans. All right, we might actually just be able to cast, if he doesn't put a creature down on the board, um, be able to just cast uh, our other cards. Okay, there he is, but we can kill that creature. So what we're probably gonna do is just do one massive swing here at our opponent. Um, so we'll go ahead and just, well, Eh, whatever. We don't need to be greedy. I was going to say we could potentially kill them this turn with by just making our guy giant, but there's really no need to do that. It's better to just be safe, and then we still have backup stuff in the hand. It's cool to just try to win, but I don't think we're in any any danger of just losing this normally. So, um... All right, I just want to get that ability back on the board just so we have that option if it's needed later, uh, but Kaya's pretty cool Planeswalker too. I like her a lot, so. Um, 
but yeah, we'll be able to take out our opponent next turn very easily with this. All right. So we're just going to activate Kai's ability first. That might even just kill the opponent before anything else happens, but let's see. Yep. And then if that hadn't happened, we could have cast another 4-7, which would have pumped our guy up 14. So, yeah. Uh, this deck is really cool. Thanks again, Yanis, for uh, figuring out uh, this cool idea. And I'm having a lot of fun with this. And as you can see, it works pretty well. I didn't really pay attention to the objectives. We were winning so fast. I should have actually cast other creatures for that. So, again, just kind of highlighting the deck. But the deck easily could have lost some more creatures and then... Um, cast some creatures with low toughness because that's what a lot of this deck is. All right, enjoy. More videos coming soon.